joined by the one and only <laughs> Clarissa Davis. White Soul, your jersey is up in the rafters right behind us. The ceremony took place right before the game started. How are you feeling? I am so blessed. I'm excited to be here um, for, with my family. I was thinking about, like, man, in college, with injuries and things like that, I only played three years. And to be able to accomplish those things, I mean, as an athlete, you, you're, you're looking at the situation and going, gosh, what a career. And I had great teammates, great coaching staff. I, I know uh, Lynn Poole and Jill Rankin, mm -hmm. those guys, Annette Smith and Fran Harris, we have Andrew here, teammates who pushed me. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah, not to mention Kim. <laughs> oh, yeah, the one who passed the ball, right? <laughs> because I never let anyone in assist. <laughs> How nice was it to see the players come up to you, the current crop of players, how they're working underneath. Oh, I saw them come up to you and give you hugs, and, and how did it feel to get those recognition from these players on the court right now? Well, I, I almost see it as a, a responsibility because I know a lot of them, and uh, I'm appreciative of the work they put in, and I just want to inspire them to do more and, and to strive to be better, and, and that's what we talked about before the game. You know, you talked about the fact that you were injured your junior year. You played only eight and a half games yes. that year, technically yeah. nine. But um, and then you had your freshman year player of the year, Final Four MVP. Sophomore year, we were in the Final Four here. Uh, hurt yourself, and then your your senior year had a tremendous, tremendous season. Talk about the rivalries or the things you remember the most uh, as far as just playing here at Texas. What, what's the one thing that stands out to you the most? Well, first, it starts at home. I, I remember going into our practices and, and understanding that I was playing against the best players in the country in practice every day, and we competed at a high level. And, and that, that was the foundation for which I built on. And then from there, everything else was easy. But I learned how to work early. I learned about team early. And I, I learned to never get satisfied with where you are, but to always push forward. What does it mean having Jody Conrad here in the house to kind of celebrate this occasion with you? You know, it's great. And I know that she enjoys seeing us come back. Um, I see a lot of alums here within the staff and, and on the sidelines and, and even attending the game. So you know, the fact that we're alive, blessed, and able to be here, we're happy about that. And she looks good. <laughs> she does good. There's Aretha Swindell next to her, another tremendous player, Fran Harris, sitting next to Aretha as well. So quite the lineup of, of uh, teammates there. Talk a little bit about your injury. I know LaShawn Higgs went through this injury this year, had to come back with less than a year of rehab. How difficult is that for you, and is it for any player? Well, at, at first, it's it's physical initially. Then you go through your surgery, then it becomes so mental. And it, it can be such a strain on you. And I think you have to decide early on that you want to get back, that you want to be better. And then everything after that, you work towards that. And, and that was my goal. I wanted to come back. I wanted to be stronger and better than I was before. Collier battling underneath. She was taking over this second quarter. You know, when you talk about your numbers, 843 hey. points your senior season. And you talk about some teams now, they don't even have a player who has scored 400 points in their senior season. The, the numbers historically are incredibly impressive. What stands out to you when you look back at your time? You know, I, I would say tenacity. You know, I never wanted to take a playoff. I always wanted the ball. I wanted to be around the ball. And I had a lot of pride in my defense, and I knew that that would turn into offense for me. But uh, as we were joking earlier, I, I called myself a role player because it was my role to shoot because I didn't break any role. assist records. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was trying to score for sure. Um, but to look at my senior season and to see the accomplishments, go back and pull up the numbers and go, gosh, I did that with a brace on my knee. I hurt my thumb and I had a back brace sometimes. So, I mean, I was like the walking wounded, but the spirit was strong and, and my faith was really increased in those times. It was amazing. I think it, you know, this is a tremendous game I'm sort of not talking about right now, but it, to me it was amazing how many injuries we had during those years. And a lot of people have even forgotten about Doretha Conwell and how, man, she was one heck of a player. And you and Doretha got to play together like nine games or yes, 10, 12 yes. games. Isn't the first, that crazy? Yeah, her first year here. And uh, just to think about the things that could have been had it not been for injuries. And not that these people didn't play, but the, you know, going to the Elite Eight, going to the Final Four, those times, it, it makes an impact during those big games like that. Listen to people like that. Well, absolutely. You, it, you think about Doretha 
the fact that she, we were kind of mirror of each other. The type of player, she was just bigger than I. She was about four, three inches bigger than I. So uh, we never really saw that materialize. Um, but we knew how to um, use what we had and go through injuries and, and patch ourselves up and get back out there. Six minutes to play here in the first half. A battle between the Cowgirls and the Longhorns. Take a look, there it is, the banner. Both your names right on there. Tremendous players. Yeah, what were practices like? Oh, oh, oh. How competitive oh were the practices? <laughs> practices were brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, and here I am. I chose to go, so I'm recruited, nationally recruited, and I choose the school <laughs> that was ranked number one before I got there, and they have six seniors. So nobody wants to give up their names. And I, I'm trying to find my way. So I had to very early on compete. Yeah, game, games were easy. <laughs> games were literally, games were easy for us. And it was kind of funny because we watch other teams on the free throw line, they're huffing and puffing and they're tired and like, we're good. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty incredible just to go through those practices and to be around people that played uh, at such a high level, I think. And that, I mean, I know it was tough for you. It was tough for everybody to have to give up minutes. You know, we all wanted to play more, but I think it just fueled our competitiveness, though. Know? Yeah, it did. Give up. I was trying to steal minutes <laughs> in from anybody. I used to sit right next to Coach Conrad. Get in her way. <laughs> Don't you see me here? <laughs> I'm ready to go in. <laughs> but that's what you have to do. That's why you're in the record books, Hall of Famer. <laughs> 26 points per game during your senior season among so many accolades. How much has the game changed over the years? I think the NBA has impacted uh, the game, and I think it starts the youth level. Um, you see a lot of people trying to shoot the three, um, a lot of ball handling. I think when you go down and you look at championship teams, though, they still do the little things. When you look at the Warriors and what they were doing, they moved without the ball, they passed the ball, they shared, everybody filled their role. So though it's changed, I, I think some things need to come back. You know, I, I'd like to see Post go into the post and actually demand the ball and either get an and one or a bucket. Amen. <laughs> I agree with that. It's a lot of percentages, right? Yes. Less than five to play here in the first half. Texas shooting 26%, Oklahoma State just above 30 now, and we are tied yet again. You know, we watch a game like this with a team like Oklahoma State that's, you know, right at 500, and a Texas team who's third in the conference right now. I don't think people realize uh, how competitive conference play can be at different times, and we've experienced that, especially if you have a target on your back. Uh, how much you have to be on your game. What's your advice to the players with this team right now heading into postseason play? Well, you know, what I tell them is, who are you? What defines you? What adjectives do we use to describe you? And do you let your past dictate your present and your future? And they have the opportunity to, to game by game, go out and win. And so it, it's a matter of each person deciding within themselves that they're going to do whatever it takes individually, and then they're going to branch out and pull their teammates along to be better. And, and you just can't be comfortable with participating in the game. You gotta wanna dominate the game. Everybody talks about all millennials do different this and that. Do you see a big difference in, in the way players kind of connect to their coach or at least relate to their coaches nowadays? I think there's a difference and I, I think that coaches, uh, I mean, there's a good and the bad of it, right? Yeah. So the coaches feel compelled more to be more communicative, to really work on a relationship, and I think that's very, very important because a player who feels that you care, you know, about them, you love them, then you're gonna really work for that player, that coach. So, yes, I, I think that's very important, but at the same time, sometimes at youth level, we get trophies for, like, just paying participate, right, right, right now, and so I want the millennials, the younger people coming behind them, to value the work and the journey and the process. Joanne Allen Taylor putting in the work and putting Texas back on top by one. Oh, and there hasn't been a break for quite a while. That five minute mark came and went a couple of minutes ago. So both of these teams running on fumes right now. 
A timeout on the floor. Clarissa, we want to thank you so much. Clarissa Davis, right still. There it is, up in the rafters. Just the second Texas women's player ever to receive that honor. Thanks so much again, Clarissa. Thank you.